Wait, where does he say that? He says um, the government, the government's position, and by government he means prosecution, right? The yeah. government's position is untenable in light of the separation of powers principle that right. we have outlined. If official well, conduct yes. for which the president is immune may be scrutinized to help secure his conviction, even on charges that purport to be based only on his unofficial conduct, then the intended effect of immunity would be defeated. The president's immune conduct would be subject to examination by a jury on the basis of generally applicable criminal laws. So he's saying here yep. that like you can't even for an unofficial act, he's saying you could well, he's never. Well, he's saying you, you shouldn't be able to because that would open up the immune conduct. Yeah. So how is this not but, like. But, but nowhere. It's sort of like, um, shoot, it's tough to describe. It's, hmm, I'm trying to think if there's a good analogy here because, um, hmm. Every single argument he's given here is telling us why we can't use that as evidence. Well, Are you why saying you shouldn't? No, why, why you, you can't? You can't. Well, where, wait, where does he say that it's, uh, it violates some provision of the law or the Constitution. It's, if you read carefully, it seems like he's just upset that uh, allowing the evidence in would get rid of the immunity. It would allow him to be charged with a crime. No, I super disagree. He's okay. saying that what it sounds like Roberts is doing, and maybe I, maybe I have an agreement, what it sounds like Roberts is doing is Roberts is saying that we are protecting some behavior and that behavior is protected wholly and fully and completely. And therefore, if you want to charge the president with another crime, you cannot probe that behavior ever and use it as evidence of this other crime, period, full stop. That's what it sounds like he's like, saying. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Like, it sounds like if He's Roberts could say, if Roberts could talk where... about, like, if, if the United States of America was responsible for recording, like, events that happen in the universe, it sounds like Roberts would make the argument that we are going to make a ruling today that the universe should not record the events of the president performing official acts because just recording those events would give people the ability to probe yeah. into that. Like, that's what it sounds like he's saying in terms of, like, it's, that's, that's, but that, I, that's, I, like, wording. That is what he's saying, essentially. Is that, like, I, th I think that's what he wants to say. I don't think he can, though. But he, so how is he not? If, wait, let me, um, let me, when the court says something, they say it very clearly. For example, um, the actual holding, they say specifically, uh, what was it for, um, for private acts, there is no immunity period for unofficial acts. Yeah. Un for private. Okay. They might say private, but for unofficial I think they said private, but it doesn't matter. Same, same difference. Sure. Um, in all this section, there is no statement, this evidence cannot be used, period. It's a whole bunch of, well, if you use the evidence, it'll be bad because it'll violate the immunity. And, but he's never, there's never a clear statement, you cannot use this evidence that I, that I saw. Uh, hold on. Okay. Yeah, let me, I'm just... Uh, I'll just, I guess I'll just read this last paragraph. The government asserts that these weighty concerns can be managed by the district court through the use of evidentiary rulings and jury instructions. Brief for, uh, okay. But such tools are unlikely to protect adequately the president's constitutional prerogatives. Presidential acts frequently deal with matters likely to arouse the most intense feelings. Allowing prosecutors to ask or suggest that the jury probe official acts for which the president is immune would thus raise a unique risk that the jurors' deliberations would be prejudiced by their views of the president's policies and performance while in office. The prosaic tools on which the government would have courts rely on are inadequate safeguards against the peculiar constitutional concerns implicated in the prosecution of a former president. Although such tools may suffice to protect the constitutional rights of individual criminal defendants, the interests that underlie presidential immunity seek to protect not the president himself, but the institution of the presidency. You're saying because... You're saying that was a whole bunch of words. Set. I, 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 I got my doctorate. I know how to write a whole bunch of bullshit that actually doesn't say. Well, anything. it sounds like you're looking for you're looking for like a if a then c. But what he's saying is but like that's if how, a that's then how b legal then c. Rulings are made. Yes. Really exactly. though, if so, if a, if a guy yes, would have said, well, here's, here's what it sounds like you're saying. Okay, it sounds like it sounds like you're saying this that a court a court is ruling, it is illegal. Okay, let's say that I get into a red car. OK, and now the yeah. court has before it a law and the court is trying to figure out the law and the court basically reinterprets the thing. It was like, OK, well, here is a thing. All right. Uh, it is illegal to get into a uh, it's illegal to get into a red car. OK. 
And then they're looking at another person, all right, who, when he got into the red car, he did this by, like, he got in through, like, the back seat or something, right? And the court is saying, now, when we look at this guy, he opened the back door, and he got into a car, and the car was painted red. And it sounds like you're saying, well, hold on, the court didn't say he was breaking the law, because they just said that he got into the back seat of the car, and then they said the car was painted red. They didn't say he got into a red car and broke the law. Therefore, it doesn't apply at all. But, like, this whole ruling is about Roberts saying that we have to protect the constitutional prerogatives of the presidential office, that we have to protect him from, from being probed by prosecutors, and that doing allowing his behavior to be used as evidence would allow prosecutors to probe. He's saying that there wouldn't be adequate protections um, for a president because of the arousal of great political interest or whatever, right? So it sounds like he's essentially saying yes. that. He just has, He's saying if A— uh, or if A, then B, and obviously if B, then C. But you're saying, well, he's not saying if A, then C, so therefore it's not a legal holding. There's no way, right? Like, no. Okay, let me, let me, um, let me try and use your hypothetical. It, the my way hypothetical is really shit. If you can design a better one, then please. Yeah, but. Well, it's fine. It, it'll work for the purpose. Okay, okay. so uh, uh, getting in red car illegal. Now, they make that ruling, and then they go, now, if they allowed people to get in blue cars, that'd be bad. It'd be really bad. It'd nullify the whole thing of, because really, we don't care what color it is. It's just, it's bad that they're able to get in the cars. And so they shouldn't allow people to get in blue cars either. That's not the rule. That's just him going on on this, why, why it sucks that the law is the way it is. Well, but this is directly speaking to, like, like this sentence right here. That proposal, okay. where the proposal is examining an official act just as evidence in front of the one, right? That proposal right. threatens to yes. eviscerate the immunity that we have recognized. So the immunity they've recognized yes. is that's a direct reference I, to the I holding, agree. right? And he's but saying that what you're proposing with... would threaten to eviscerate exactly what we've yes. recognized as part of the holding yes. here today for the court. Oh, I agree. He hates it. That Well, but it sounds like but he's saying— That's the same as me saying, I hate that people can get in blue cars. That doesn't change the law that the law only prevents people from getting in red cars. I can say it eviscerates the entire thing. It doesn't actually change the rule. Well, if you're the one crafting the rule, <laughs> it kind of does. What did we say at the beginning of this well, conversation? Right, but what I'm did you tell me? The only thing a court can do is speak, right? Yeah, but that doesn't mean that everything they say is valuable. <laughs> I, I agree that if he's meandering on the outskirts, sure, but this is like directly within the purview but, of But the that's my point. There is no place in here where there is a direct, um, what would be the best, like a direct call to action of, um, of what the law is. When the court is making a decision of what the law is, generally they set it out. They're like... Um, it's usually almost the last, that's why I, the first thing I did was look to the last sentence or two of the paragraph, because if there was a rule, it would come right after, but the institution of the presidency, accordingly, evidence of evidence, uh, that has to do with the official acts cannot be admitted to trial or something like that. But nowhere is there an actual prescription within all of that meandering crap that he says. How many, how many judges would agree that this is the way that you read these rulings, do you think? God, I would hope a majority. <laughs> Considering um, that even in this case, I feel they're citing dicta, at least for like the Fitzgerald case, even in this case, it feels like, how, do you really think that every judge is reading that in this way that they're like, okay, well, this is, because if, if it really truly is as strict as you're saying, why is there no fucking outline, at least for a layman, because these are published for everybody to read, why would there not be outlined specifically for what is part of the well, holding and what isn't? Okay, let me, let me be clear. I don't believe, at least originally, the Supreme Court opinions were not published for the layman. Uh, they're required, were required to be published as an official government act. Um, I, I think it's only relatively recently where, because I remember when I was a kid, when a Supreme Court opinion would come out, they would have lawyers on, um, on the TV to explain what it meant, because certainly no reporter or pundit was going to <laughs> try and interpret the Supreme Court opinion. Sure. Um, so I think that's a relatively recent phenomenon where 
everybody is commenting on Supreme Court opinions. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's let's um. Um. Where's my current conversation? Just just to okay. Uh, wrap up that part. Yeah, we'll wrap this up now. I there, I, told, there, I super disagree on this. I'm gonna bring a peace later to fight with you on this, but all we'll, we can okay, we can put a bow tie um, on this and then we can go to the next part. Yeah, but go ahead. Um, okay. Um. So anyway, just looking through all that section, there's not one prescriptive statement in the entire thing. There's a whole bunch of this is really bad statements. Okay. But that's not how laws may. <laughs> you keep that, saying that, but I would say cautiously that you're right. Right. But that, well, this isn't law. This is a Supreme Court decision. Right. It's not like they're writing a law or that they need to cons- like they need to actually write out an explicit statute. No. Right. Well, yes. But if they want lower courts to be able to follow the holding, they need to make the holding clear, which is why I said I'm pretty sure the holding is just those fr- three parts, uh, you know, core um, sphere of duty. Uh, isn't when he outer- says so. If I go to page 21, OK, Robert says, yeah. Trump is therefore absolutely immune from prosecution for the alleged conduct involving his discussions with Justice Department officials, right? Yes. Um, would not Roberts talking about what immune means? Wouldn't that be? But nowhere does he say immunity means that evidence uh, can't be admitted as trial. That isn't is that not exactly what he's talking about when he's saying if you you would threaten the very immunity we're talking about if you allowed this to be used as evidence for another crime? Isn't that what he's doing? Is he's, he's defining well, what that he's immunity saying it mean? would threaten it, but nowhere does he say. Ah, uh, gosh, I wish well, like I could a, explain this better. Well, no, it's, you're explaining it well enough. I just don't buy the explanation. Like, because what you're telling me is that, like, okay. if, if there was a Supreme Court opinion and it was saying things like the First Immunity, or I'm sorry, the First Amendment is, is essential in protecting uh, freedom of speech and blah, 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 right? Um, and, you know, they've asked us if, let's let's say Brandenburg, that, that court case hasn't happened yet. And let's say a similar case is in front of the court. And they're saying that um, people should be... Um, People should be allowed to say whatever they want, literally any word they want when they're in front of a crowd, okay? Uh, They should be able to say whatever they want. Um, A police officer arresting somebody for their speech in front of a crowd would threaten the very First Amendment rights that we seek to uphold today in the court. In my mind, everybody would read that as, okay, a police officer can't arrest you while you're making a speech. Even though they're not saying a police officer, therefore, may not arrest anybody. They're saying that you're threatening the very thing that we're outlining in this court case. But it sounds like you're saying that, well, that's kind of dicta. They're saying they'd be really mad if you do this. It'd be bad. But it's not actually this precise legal prescription. So it wouldn't be like the absolute holding of the court. I understand. So I think I understand what you're saying. I just don't believe it. That can't be true. We need Dan in here. We need a good. uh, We don't um, need Dan. (laughs) We have Pisco in here, but we don't need Dan in here. Absolutely (laughs) not. (laughs) Never mind. Uh, It was going to be a bad Jew joke. Anyway, um, we need somebody because... Uh, lawyers, and they say that's the reason a lot of them are Jewish, is that they're really good at reading the exact wording and where you put the comma matters. And so you may be saying, well, anybody would read this, but a lawyer wouldn't. A lawyer would examine okay, wait, hold word on. and where Stop. Hold on. Or I should. don't. I I used to believe this a long time ago. Okay, because it's like the memes about law and yeah. it's all legal bullshit and you can't tell or whatever. But I feel like after reading these cases, I feel like that's not generally true. It's not like you have to. Re- there might be like some jargon that you have to be familiar with, but I don't feel like I've read anything where I'm like, oh fuck, like that's the one fucking word that changes everything. Like they write pretty clearly, especially well, the courts as of the past think, couple of decades. Like they're pretty clear. They cite yeah. the things and they use extensive writing. And it's never like just one comma or one word that's like mind fucking you and everything. I feel uh, like. They're pretty accessible, okay. but you can maybe I'm wrong on that. Yeah, I would I would argue this section C on page 30 and 31 is that if you actually went through and examined like sentence by sentence, you will find that nowhere in it is there a prescription of what a lower trial court should do. It is all just vague mumblings. That there's nothing to follow for a lower trial court. As well, it seems. Well, there, I feel like there is, but you're saying there's nothing where they're saying you must do this. It's saying it would be bad. So I would agree with you if your argument was, well, it's dicta, but they're making a good ar- argument that a lower court might listen to. That I would agree with. Hmm. Like, that's what he's doing, is he's making this really good argument for a lower court of why they should rule a certain way. But it's not actually a direction to them that they have to. 
Okay. It's I mean like to me to me this reads exactly like Thomas's uh concurrence. It's like, yeah, the, none of this has anything to do with the case. I don't know what Well, it literally has to do with directly the facts of the case and it signals to you well, what yeah, the court then, is going to how the that, court is going to so rule, right? Thomas's it has to do with the facts of the case. Well, but no, but not, not the case before the court. Thomas's has to do with the uh, the appointment of a special prosecutor, right? Yeah. Yes. But I'm saying but like in this case it's so yeah. on the nose that even if I were to grant you that all of this is dicta, it doesn't matter. It would be yeah. the exact same as the holding, at least for the purposes of this case. Because, like, let's say this gets all the way. Let's say that Smith says, okay, well, okay, well, I listened to Destiny's Stream, and this, that guy said that that wasn't his actual ruling. It was dicta. So we're going to actually steamroll full speed ahead with this exact, you know, legal construction yep. for this case. If it were to hit the Supreme Court, Roberts would then say, he most likely, right, because this was a 60 but decision. He might, ah, but now, this is just my theory. Okay. I believe that at that point, Coney, Bar Coney Barrett and Gorsuch, at least, would flip to the other side. Mm. Because... But part of, Comey's, part of Comey's concurrence is literally her Amy Comey Barrett. Part of Barrett's concurrence yeah. is literally her saying the court goes way too far in bucketing some of this behavior. Yes. But why would she say That's that? Why would, why would why wouldn't why wouldn't because she seems to write she Amy writes for the common man. I appreciate her writing. Okay, <laughs> why wouldn't she write? Hey, listen. Okay, for you streamer for the retards at home reading this. Okay, just know that when Roberts is opining on this shit is fucking meaningless. Why wouldn't she write yeah. that instead of saying like I don't know why the fuck Roberts went so fucking far in all this shit. He didn't need to. Why would she write that instead? Did she misread it or? No, I think I think the. Um... Very rarely do the judges, or justices technically for Supreme Court, um, go, go after each other like that. Because they also understand that they would they be have undermining to their respectable. own. Yeah, yeah exactly. So even if they disagree and they see the obvious flaws, they may not point it out. Um, they might fl they point out flaws in legal reasoning or such, but to be like. Uh, Chief Justice is a retired, and I don't know why he's. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 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 Send. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go. We're getting real hard on this. Page. Okay. Going to. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Barrett's concurrence. Okay. I'm at mm -hmm. it's page. It's page uh, five in her concurrence. It's sixty five in the PDF. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Let me know when you're there, and I'm going to the bottom paragraph. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Barrett writes, I understand most of the court's opinion to be consistent with these views. I do not join Part 3C, however, which holds that the Constitution limits the introduction of protected conduct as evidence in a criminal prosecution of a president beyond the limits afforded by executive privilege. So when she says that Part 3C holds... Yeah, I think, holds... I think she's wrong. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I don't. Okay, well... Well, wait, you, you, yeah. you're allowed to disagree with Roberts, but I can't disagree with uh, Coney Barrett? <laughs> well, I disagree with Roberts because I think the substance of his opinion is fucking retarded, but you're saying that Barrett doesn't know which part of a ruling is actually... Which is... All, I, also, this was probably... I, I guarantee wait, you, every would, justice thought about this a lot. They must have. This is a big ruling, right? Yeah. Um, I, I would argue that the, the court has started writing for the public now. Okay. Well, obviously, um, of course they have. In her, uh, in the Colorado case, right? Barrett writes like the temperatures yeah. that the writings of the court should like turn the temperature down and not up, and yeah. Yeah, and so, um, so I do believe that some of it is played up for the public um, in the mm, dissent. Okay. Uh, this, I'm not saying this is. I honestly don't know enough about Barrett yet um, to have a good opinion. Okay. Um, but there are justices on the court that are not the brightest. I mean, you've read Roberts's opinion. <laughs> so just because one of them screws something up, I don't know is that. Um, sure. Although I yeah, also have to, I do, I use the word dumb and stupid and all this a lot, but I, I mean, as I've made a more joker pivot, it might be worth asking, is he actually an idiot or is there something more intentional with the protections being afforded here? I, I don't know. I don't usually even engage I, I, in that. I just no, assume I stupidity, think. but. <laughs> no, uh, I, there, there are some that Alito is definitely on that side. Like he fancies himself a legal scholar, but he's a, he's a partisan hack, obviously. 
Um, okay. But I don't believe that's the same for Roberts. I think Roberts just isn't the sharpest member of the court. Put it that way. Okay. But he's it's a, he's a Supreme Court justice. He should be a pretty fucking smart dude when it comes to law. And I imagine, I, I don't know any of his background, but he must have like, he must have an extensive background in, in law. He must have been a judge for however many fucking years before that and everything, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, weren't you the one saying you've met enough lawyers now? Where <laughs> Yeah, but there's a difference between, like, meeting lawyers versus meeting, like, the top fucking legal lawyers slash scholars of the United States constitutional interpretation yes. <laughs> in the United States, right? Like, Yep. Um, um, but okay. Yeah. Uh, All right, so yeah. moving uh, past us, yeah. a bunch of opinions, you'll mm -hmm. be able to pick out which judges are, uh, are motivated by politics, which ones are really bright, and you totally, like, um, I disagree with almost everything Kagan writes. She's brilliant. Okay. Um, it's not, <laughs> but Roberts, he's just, he, he can't even make a good argument for his position. It's, it's just bad. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. Do you have, and okay, I do so agree past... with you. I wish that Gorsuch had written this cause I, you, I, I don't think I would have to be here trying to defend. <laughs> sure. Okay. As, are there any other more specific things or was this kind of like broadly, um, if we hit everything? See. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me just run through and see if there was anything specific that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 president. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention that's not directly related, but you've brought up a number of times, um, court opinions are like a game of telephone. And so you'll see somebody cite a case mm -hmm. and then that case is citing another case mm -hmm. and if you go back and read like um i pointed out the uh sotomayor citing a case that actually says that uh government officials don't uh can't be charged with any general cr crime mm -hmm. like she obviously didn't mean to cite that but that's if you follow her citations that's what the case says i don't understand what so you're they saying, all right? do this they all the, the, if you actually go through the citations, most of them don't know what they're citing. I mean, and sometimes they cite things. They're all by law students, so um, sure, <laughs> depending like on they're... yeah. There are times when they when people cite things that I think is a little bit inappropriate, and then there are times when people cite things that I think are more appropriate. So yeah, I can remember yeah. you say you like Kagan. I think Kagan might have wrote the majority. Um, no, you wouldn't call it the majority dissent, would you? You would just call it the dissent. Would you call it the majority right. or whatever the fuck? She wrote the dissent no, on, I think just, it was on the Chevron case, right? Was that Kagan? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I think so, yeah. I didn't like that dissent at all because when I read um, two of the underlying cases she was citing, she was citing to things about like, well, the environmental legal thing, um, like here are two cases. And I think that it's crazy that the court could ever figure out anything like this. Look at how complicated it is. But when you yeah. actually read those cases, in order for the court to even know, you know, what the statutory uh, what the statutory construction should be, they have to go with, sift through like a lot of the information about it, right? Then the judges right. have to have some uh, because how could you even begin to know if you should make a ruling on it if you don't understand any of the subject matter? Yeah. And I thought it was funny that she was making it sound like not, not to throw. It's, it felt like she was throwing the circuit courts or she was throwing these other courts under the bus and saying, like, well, these yes. judges are obviously retards. They can't handle these decisions. And when you read the case, like, damn, they're considering a lot of heavy jargon when they're doing these rulings. I don't know how I feel yeah. about that. Yeah. But yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I like I said, I don't often agree with her. Sure. But I think that as like she is obviously not a political hack. <laughs> OK. Sotomayor is a political hack. Um, OK. There is uh, there is. There's no, it's, it's almost like, um, it's like reading Thomas. It's, there's, there's okay. nothing there other than politics. Maybe I haven't gotten there yet, but I haven't, I don't have that impression of Sotomayor yet, but maybe I'll read an opinion um, in the future and I'll be like, okay, wow. Yeah. And, and possibly I'm, I could, a fair, fair, uh, criticism is I could be spoiled from listening to all the or oral arguments. Okay. But when you listen to somebody who's never asking a question where they actually want an answer and is only like political grandstanding, it's like, okay, you <laughs> like, that's not your job as a justice. Your jo <laughs> job is supposed to be impartial. Uh, before you sure. the case. I mean, yeah, so. I mean, I, I agree with you there, but I mean, like I was told beforehand and it did seem to be true that oral arguments are, I don't want to say they're a meme, but, but, 
I think Esports Batman and Pisco might have both said that if you listen to oral arguments, you can basically always tell how a case is going to turn out. You listen to oral arguments, yes. you listen to the question, you can in- immediately tell which, because the judges aren't like first considering this case at oral arguments. They've already read through yeah. the case and been briefed on a lot of things, yep. and they probably already have pretty strong opinions about it. So they're just asking some clarifying questions. Maybe they can be moved, maybe not. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's the difference, though. Some of them are clarifying questions. Other questions are just like when you're watching the um, congressional hearings, and they're not actually questions. They're statements. <laughs> sure. Why is it just curious, okay, and I, you can opine on this, if Roberts mm. is willing to write so many meme things about all this other stuff that you're saying is dicta, why is yeah. it that he wouldn't address? Because in oral arguments, the Navy SEALs hypothetical came up, and in Sotomayor's yep. dissent, the Navy SEALs hypothetical came up. Why didn't Roberts ever address this hypothetical if he ri- likes to write so much random shit in his opinion? Because it would sound bad if he said that, of course, that's going to be immune. <laughs> okay, well, isn't that the biggest worry for somebody like me? <laughs> What well, might be the biggest? Wor- okay, wait. There was because now you're sounding like it. The, that way- the worst stuff would be immune. Yeah, I, I, I don't. The worst stuff I think is the most immune. Well, how, how so is here, this supposed to convince me that this was a good ruling? Then, yeah. <laughs> okay, here's how I'll convince you that it's the best ruling that I've think they could have made. Okay. What I want. Okay. As a judge, you have to come up with a rule that will apply to all future cases, okay? Okay. So I want you to try and come up with a rule that let me, uh, f- what, what was the, um, crap, I can't remember the, uh, what was it, SEAL Team 6 hypothetical? Yeah. Um, what, yeah, what was it exactly? The president orders SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival. He says Polit- it was a matter of national rival. security. Boom, okay. unquestionable. Yes. Okay. I want to know, how do you write a rule that makes the president immune from prosecution from ordering a regular assassination by SEAL Team 6, but not immune when it's a political rival, other than one that literally says, if it's a political rival, he's not immune. That would be absurd. You need something that covers all the situations, not just that one. I would say that step one is you don't undermine yourself, okay? We need to have some level of faith that our courts can handle difficult questions. And ironically, as Roberts, as you would say, is fighting for legitimacy in the court, I think he undermines the legitimacy of our criminal court system harshly when he implies that we are woefully unequipped in every realm, in the grand jury realm, in the prosecutorial realm, in the, in the initially making decisions, in the jury realm, in the, in the actual court. All of these things are incapable of dealing with a highly charged political question like that of a, the prosecution of a president. So I think the first stage is you don't undermine the fuck out of your entire branch of government. Okay, I think that's number one. Okay. Yeah. Part, part of that was prosecutorial, which is the other understand. But like, for the, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's number one. Number two is, I would say, I mean, like, we could sit here and think of, like, what I would consider to be a better thing. I, I mean, but I would immediately say that if you take every single thing that we've just said and you slap all of this into the affirmative defense realm, I would already say that that's immediately, like, vastly superior. Like, if, if you want to take me to court for this, um, maybe you can, um, I don't know. I'm sure there are ways in, um, I'm sure there are ways in, uh, it, can an affirmative, you could tell me, I don't know if you're, can you yeah. use an affirmative defense as a matter of like in summary judgment or is that always going to be no. for the consideration? Okay. That'll always be the, for the consideration of a jury. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's the problem with treating it as a, uh, well, no, no, no hold on. That's a, fine. Affirmative. Well, okay. but hold on. But then, but then, <laughs> but then, okay. So then here's another question. So you can't dismiss something summary, whatever, but prosecutors do take affirmative defenses into account when it comes to bringing charges. You agree with that, right? Yes. So, yeah. So, for instance, well, I mean, yeah. So, very obviously, there are people that kill people, and the prosecutor, the, the DA or whatever, uh, or the general attorney, he's looking over the video footage and everything. He's like, okay, yeah, this this is almost for sure self-defense. We're not even going to bother indicting, right? So, yep. if if these questions hung ab- above us, right, you know, okay, the president ordered the assassination of this, you know, we subpoena a few government records, we, you know, you see that like, oh, well, you know, the CIA told him that, you know, Biden was actually, you know, loaded up with 400 AK-47s and him and the Democrats are going to go march on D.C. and take out Trump. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, fuck, this would probably, he would survive this in court, obviously, easily, right? I feel like that process is fine. The criminal process that we have right now, I think, would adequately protect a president who's doing his job. 
and then I would challenge you, I would ask you, can you consider or give me a hypothetical that I feel would be genuinely really difficult to answer with our current criminal prosecution system? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it could. Or actually, here, system... I'm going to wait. I'm going to get a drink and use the restroom real quick yeah. so you can think real good about this. Okay. And then after we do this, uh, Peace Co can hop in if he wants to fight a little. Um, sure. Yeah, I'm going to use the restroom. And then so, so my question is, is I'm, I'm trying to ask you, give me something where it's like, here's an action the president takes. And you and I would both agree that obviously a president, even if it's not political, he should be able to take this action. But he might have a huge question in his mind where he might face a lot of obstacle because now it could be criminally prosecuted, right? That's, yeah. Okay, I'll be back one second. Yep. All right. What do you got for me? Okay. Okay. So I don't think it's actually, the worry is more of what the court didn't say, but I'm guessing you'd agree that at least two or three of them believe it. They're worried about political prosecutions, prosecutions where they don't, they don't believe that the uh, president actually violated the law but he's being prosecuted to harass mm -hmm. uh, him or her in the future. Um, 
And I think that's, that's what they're the, really concerned about. That's the best faith, most charitable, and that reasonable interpretation. That should be what they're worried well, about, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, think, I think for at least, especially probably Thomas and Alito and maybe Roberts, I think they probably do believe that. Okay. Um, that's my guess anyway. And I think that that is mostly what they're concerned with. And I, I, I can see it. Um, wait, before you know, go, wait, you? wait, before you go too far yeah. down this road, this is going to be the quickest roadblock that I throw up here. Okay. Okay. If we're worried, because the, the next step that you take here in this argument is we're saying, well, the reason why the president needs absolute immunity is because a whole system could be so corrupt that a, a prosecutor could bring charges against the president purely for political reasons and somehow trick a grand jury and if not get a conviction in court, at least do irreparable harm to the president during the trial, right? If we really believed that such an entity was so corrupt, then why wouldn't they just charge him for some random unofficial act and do the exact same thing? Uh, because it wouldn't have the political import, I think, is the actual answer. Really? Um, I think it's the whole reason that... Uh, oh, I was going to ask. Are you old? I think you are. You remember the uh, Clinton-Jones uh, fiasco? Uh, I didn't study it in any detail. I was a young Republican, so I hated oh, okay. everything about Clinton. So what about it? <laughs> Um, I just, I, re I remember it cause I was, uh, I think I was a teenager at the time anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was on every day, the trial, the impeachment. And I don't know how many years it had been before that impeachment since the last one, it had been a long time. And people at the time were saying, this is bad. You shouldn't do this. Look, you're opening a you know, can of worms. They're going to use this for other presidents just cause they don't like them. And, it's like, no, no, he, he was, it was high crimes and misdemeanors. We definitely need to. And now it seems like they constantly are threatening to impeach the president. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I would say that there was a sort of a gentleman's agreement, or not even a gentleman's agreement. They just were, um, uh, what would be the right word for that? Um, it was, it was just it was a norm. It was a norm. Done. Yes, exactly. And now the norms have been violated so that I think both sides feel like, eh, you know, might as well. And I would worry that without some level of immunity, we can argue where that, you know, whether the presumption is good or whatnot. I, I understand what you're saying, I would, I, but I, yeah, I, I, I would fully worry that dis this would become the same thing. I disagree wholly. <laughs> I just think it's the worst okay. possible approach. So, I agree with what you're saying, that the, we have to pump the brakes somewhere because shit is getting a little bit out of control. I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. But what I would say is stuff is getting out of control, but it's because of the polarization that's happening in the country. And then that's being reflected in our legislative body and in the executive and maybe in the courts. And that we have to fix that polarization because, and I know you would agree with me here, no system can survive a nation of idiots, right? You can never divine it, design yeah. or divine a full a foolproof <laughs> system for everybody. If everybody yeah. is fucked and wants to destroy everything, then no piece of paper is going to keep them from doing so, right? So yeah. the idea that we need to start carving out protections for mob bosses to be president because of bad faith actors in our system is not only untenable, it's just the absolute wrong approach, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't... I would, I would say that I think the president needs immunity anyway. But okay, and so I then my I question would be that, yeah, give me the example. I actually agree with that, at least for some things. Well, the immunity, the, here's my issue, and I might just need to do more reading yeah. on this. Your immunity to me implies, like, unquestionable. And I don't think that the president is ever beyond, because even a cop is not beyond question. Well, I was, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think that's a problem with the, your definition of immunity because if you look at um, well, uh, the immunity definition. cops relief re receive, it's not unquestioned. They, you know, yeah. Yeah, but I feel like whatever so immunity cops have, I feel like that's probably about the immunity that the president had, probably. That'd be my guess. It's probably similar. Or maybe it was even right, a little bit more broad before this ruling. But I don't think he needs more than that. I don't think cops need absolute. Do you, What if somebody were to come out, like Donald Trump has, and say that cops need to enjoy the same type of immunity that the president has? You would agree that would be horrible, right? I would imagine. Uh, mm, 
No. Um, I would I would agree if it was interpreted the way or applied the way that Roberts applied it in this case. Oh, okay, never mind. But Hold on, because you're, you would agree with it, but only in this like incredibly narrow interpretation that you're giving a Robert. But if but like for the way that well, I'm I don't interpreting think it's it, incre- I, like I like these are the literally the sentences that the court wrote that I'm sure. pulling back. But in the way that I'm interpreting oh. the um, the immunity, that would be insane to give to police officers, right? Yes, of course. Okay, obviously. okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So really, then we don't no, really no. have our disagreements are relatively slight here. You have an opinion that I believe could be reasonably argued for. I just don't think that that's what Roberts put before us. But well, I, I agree. That's. Um, mm. <laughs> I think Roberts did put that holding before the world. I think he put a lot of other crap there too that was bad. That's that would be my argument. Okay, and then because just as the a, holding that I'm that I'm citing is mm-hmm. literally from his opinion, he sure. just said a whole bunch of other shit as well. Sure, and then just as a final thing, and I, it might be impossible to, or maybe difficult. Well, if it's impossible, I feel like yeah. it would be bad for me. Could you think of an action that like has to have this kind of immunity that I, I wouldn't be able to answer for if not for this immunity being provided? Well, as far as the first one, we've covered that. Anything that the um, when the president orders a military strike. Yeah, but I feel like for all of this, it would just never. What what criminal statute, like malice of forethought? Murder. When this is yeah, but it's yeah. Like, is that malice of forethought? Malice of for, forethought doesn't mean you know that doesn't mean malice, right? It just means with the intent. premeditated intent to kill. Which obviously, if you're ordering a drone strike, you have the premeditated intent to kill. Sure, but like even so, in the in the federal statute, doesn't it literally? Maybe this is begging the question, but doesn't it say unlawful? <laughs> Um, uh, no, in most of them, federal murder not statute, in the DC, um, what was it? Because I pulled up the DC, uh, statute because that's what would apply to the president. Okay. Well, so, uh, I, okay. I don't know. I think I would assume this is eight, So 18 U S code section one, 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 uh, murder is the unlawful killing of a human being with malice of forethought. Um, every murder perpetrated by poison, lying, blah, blah, blah. So now I don't know if unlawful is doing a lot of work here for me or no work here, or if it's not considered, but like, right. Well, that one, that one would, but let me just pull up the one that would apply to the president because it's the DC one. Sure. Does DC uh, have a different set of laws than just like the federal legal code? Yes. How yeah, weird. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, Let's see, it's uh, Section 22-2101 of the D.C. Code, Murder in the First Degree. Whoever, being of sound memory and discretion, kills another purposefully, purposely, sorry, not purposefully, either of deliberate and premeditated malice, and then it goes on, or in the commission of a crime, blah, 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 uh, is guilty of murder in the first degree. Um... So it's whoever, which is yeah, person, uh, being of sound memory and discretion, kills another purposely, uh, either of deliberate and premeditated malice, and that's sure. yeah. Wait, four real quick, what is the, is the um, oh DC code? Okay, I found the penalties. Okay, yeah. Wait, it just says yeah, punishment. DC Why does it say the twenty-two? Pun- sorry, what? Why it just keeps getting the punishments? Hold on. Um, shall be sentenced to life without release, it's, notwithstanding any criminal oh, guilty murders. Okay. Um, I can send you the. Uh, the link if you want. Sure. I don't know why the fuck. Um, if I can find Discord. Uh, shoot. How do I send a message in here? There's got to be a button. Or not. The hell's the button? Why the fuck is this so I cringe? Can... DC murder statute. Okay. Uh, there we go. There's the link. Uh, send it in a DM. <laughs> There's probably some way to do it in the room, but I don't know how. Okay. Wait, fuck. This is... Okay. Murder in the first degree. Huh. Okay. Um... What does um? The, I thought that malice of forethought, um, that, that that's not a stronger implication of a criminal intent of a devious intent. That's not what that malice of forethought. No, <laughs> no, not at all. It's it's a, a really unfortunate thing uh, <laughs> that they call it that. But yeah, malice does not mean what you think it means. <laughs> Any unique element. Um. Let's okay, see. it just means you have the intention of killing somebody. 
Exactly. It's it's really basic. That's why I said it's obviously the president ordering, ordering a drone strike meets this where criteria. Is, where does, okay, so then how are police officers protected from killing people? Like I said, I the, it is so uh, ubiquitous and known that nobody would even question that they have immunity for that. Well, but careful because cops are charged with murder and convicted of it. When they're at, acting outside of the scope of their official duties. Like if they're act, if no, they're doing would, their job well, they're not charged with. Yeah, a but you got to be so careful. Hold on. Well, definitionally, Chauvin was absolutely acting within his official duties. He was arresting a person. He had him on the ground. He had him in a restraint while he was waiting. Like he was, he was I acting as a. Yeah. I thought they weren't allowed to do that restraint, or there was some training that prevent uh, said that they shouldn't, or I don't remember it well enough to. Um, I thought he was acting outside of the. Uh, uh, whatever uh standard I mean whatever we would or... say that like if we were applying this presidential bucket to him he definitely wasn't doing an unofficial act right I would well I would say he was Really? I feel like an unofficial act for a cop would be like an off-duty cop or even an on-duty oh, cop so, um, is driving by you see someone no, on the side of the road he's like Piece of shit. sorry it would yeah. be the um the penumbra the yeah. the presumptive <laughs> Yes It would be the outer edges of official act it would still be an official act, but I wouldn't call that a core, uh, whatever, core sphere of duty or whatever. Um, hold on. I think I'm disagreeing with you. I think it would be core. Okay. Because I, it would, cause it's considered core for the president because nobody else can do it, and it's the president's job to do it, right? That's core. Who else can do what cops do besides cops? Um, nobody else can arrest. Nobody else can yeah. restrain. Nobody else can do battery, uh, well, imprisonment. Well, other people can restrain. That's allowed. Well, wait, can you? Yeah. Um, yeah, otherwise, how do you think security guards restrain um, shoplifters and whatnot? That's a, well, but, that's an af- but that's an affirmative defense, right? That's not an immunity thing, right? That's an affirmative defense. Well, because they're not a government agent. What do you mean? Well, they would never have a... They were, they're... Um, sorry, I misunderstood what you were saying. Um here, oh. Affirmative defense to the here. Let me yeah, okay. Wait, let me back up for a second, um, and, and we we'll do like a legal theory here because you can you can maybe you can yeah, answer yeah. this. And then, okay, when I think of, I feel like I've read this. Okay, an affirmative defense is saying. Okay, I think I think an affirmative defense is saying that you've done the action, the actus reus. You've done the action of a crime, but you had a reason for doing this particular thing that doesn't meet the mens rea standard or whatever. No, that would be incorrect. Well, okay, to explain this for me. Like, you're, you're, you're killing somebody. If, so, like, if I'm defending myself and I act in a way yeah. where I intentionally, like, I have all the elements of, like, murder and everything are there. I've actually killed yeah. this guy. But I'm doing it in self-defense. What is the affirmative defense essentially saying here? It's saying that you committed the crime, but you were uh, the, but, uh, the people or the legislature, depending on how you look at it, have decided that the way you committed that crime should not be punished. Is that, or how confident are you in that take? Ooh, 85, 90 maybe. Hmm, okay. I really do Because I, it I'm, definitely I'm going, does, it I'm, doesn't um, nullify the uh, mens rea. That, I, that I'm 100% on. Okay, I'm floating in a lot of vibes here, okay? So I, as much as I want to fight with you on this, I can't, I can't. Right? If you say, I agree with you. Or I mean, I have to defer to you. But it's just like, if I'm in court, okay, Let's say that um, let's say that I'm in my house, okay, and I've got another BPD girl here. She's starting to go crazy, and she's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking kill you. It's over, okay." And then she goes to my, uh, let's say that I'm in my bedroom, and she runs to the other room to grab a knife. I know she's grabbing a knife to kill me, and I've got a gun in my dresser, okay. And I'm thinking like, "Oh shit, she's gonna fucking come and kill me. I can't call the cops in time, and I can't escape, okay." I grab the gun from my dresser, all right, and I know, all right, she's gonna come back, and I'm gonna have to shoot and kill her, right? I think we've easily yep. met all the elements here for first degree murder. Okay, I have including the men's rail. Yes. But yes, when she comes in and then I, you know, I'm like, don't do this. I'm going to and then she, I, she goes to Sammy, I shoot and I kill her and I go to court. I feel like the, the, the affirmative defense isn't saying like, hey, uh, I like I am. I, I did commit first degree murder, but I had a good reason to do so. I thought it was I thought it was a bit different than that. How we're supposed to. I was like, well, it's not like he murdered I, him. He was he was killing a self-defense as a different. <laughs> But maybe it is. You could be, yeah. I, I believe from a legal perspective, it might not be in the you know popular imagination or the way people perceive it, but I believe from a strictly legal perspective, that is exactly it. You are, you have committed 
murder, but you have been found to not be uh, worthy of punishment. Huh, okay. And then for, I thought, and then immunity is saying that um, you could commit a crime, but it would never even be considered a crime, or that like it's impossible for you to commit a that crime. you can't be prosecuted for that crime, yeah. Really? Are you, sh- are you sure? Uh, generally, or, yeah. But, but, but it's, saying, it's saying what something immunity more... Means is- is but I, I, it, commit, is, isn't yeah. there a stronger statement there, though, that like you, you couldn't it's not even conceivable that you could commit the crime, which is why you're immune rather than you have like you, you can just infinitely commit the crime. I thought the idea is no, that that's uh, that's that's getting closer to the idea of the um, oh, the original sovereign immunity where the king can't be uh, like it's not even conceivable. Yeah, the, the because the king is the appointed by God, the source of law, he can't violate his own, it, it makes no sense. It's meaningless. <laughs> the, the thought itself just doesn't work. Yeah, I thought that's um, what most immunity is essentially based around, is the but idea that's that, not like... the way it really works in the U.S., is, yeah. Well, because I don't Where think we've we ever... can't even imagine that the president could commit a... No, no, we well, can well, really but imagine to be fair, that the president... <laughs> well, but hold on, to be fair... This is the first time in the history of the United States that any individual ever has been granted this type of absolute duties core immunity. That's never happened in the U.S. before. So I agree with you. It would be like crazy or weird or whatever. But that was I think that was part of the big deal of this case. No cop. No, nobody has ever been granted except for maybe diplomatic immunity, maybe for international shit. See, I still well, it all depends on what the definition of core um, because I would argue that cops, when they're performing their core functions, are absolutely immune. A cop who is doing his job. But Roberts properly, would never cannot be prosecuted. Period. Okay, here's Absolute a question. Immunity. Okay, well, here's a question. Okay, do you think? Are you familiar with the indictments against Trump for the DOJ behavior, Clark Rose and Donahue? Somewhat. Um, just just from listening to you go through them. Sure. Uh, okay. Well, based on me going through them, does that sound like a core function of the president? No. Okay. I, I would, like I said, I would disagree completely with the way Roberts applied applied it in this case. I think he was okay. wrong. Gotcha. So. And then, okay, yeah. So, so that's well, hence our issue. Okay. So it feels like our main disagreement yeah. is over how Roberts was actually going to apply this. Uh, okay. Final question before Pisco comes in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who is making the determination on presumptive immunity? Can you can you appeal things to? Can you appeal pretrial stuff? Or there's yes, a name for this. Course. Yeah, what's this called? Uh, interlocutory appeal. Oh, it, okay, generally. it is. Interlocutory appeal is when you can appeal things up before the trial is even started before or finished, Before the right? end yeah. of the trial, okay. yeah. Okay, interlocutory appeal. Okay, yeah. So any of these presumptively immune things are almost certainly going all the way up to the Supreme Court. So it's going to be the Supreme Court. That's kind of spooky, isn't it? Is, well, the Supreme Court generally yeah. doesn't make like determine. Would you call this a determination yeah. of fact or a— But then again, that normally don't have to deal with uh, the president. Being one of the uh, the uh, parties to a case, sure, but they've which also which makes it a little different than because I was just trying to think. Well, it might be applied to, but it wouldn't be applied to a governor. Not this way. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, do you understand how? So, or I, huh, that was really kind of sad. I'm sorry. Not do you understand when I say um, just in my opinion that one of my biggest criticisms initially was that this felt to me like an egregious power grab of Roberts for the courts in that the legislature could pass a criminal law and the executive could try to prosecute a criminal law but now at the end of the day the supreme court is going to decide even if those laws are passed by the legislature and even if those laws are enforced by the executive the supreme court is going to decide at the end of the day can you actually and that just seems like a big usurping of power there for that determination uh i because we agree now that like if any action is brought before the president of the United, uh, if any criminal charge is brought to a president, at the end of the day, the Supreme Court is now going to decide, does Congress's laws apply in the way that the pro- the executive's prosecutorial body wants it to? And now we decide that now. Yeah. Um, well, see, the problem is, is the Supreme Court always has that function. It just rarely would go to the Supreme Court, like I said, because usually the defendant is not the president. Uh, so sure, but so like, like, but I get it's a little a different though for every law. Well, but but but, but it's but it's law. but it's a lot different than um, 
because typically the Supreme Court is not like, um, God, fuck, I, one day we'll just go to law school. There's a determining of like fact and there's a determining of like process or some bullshit. You know what the fuck I'm talking about? Like the Supreme Court isn't generally going to look uh, at evidence and say like, oh, we think he murdered this oh, guy, yeah. but they engage in like right. statutory construction or, or they engage in like constitutional interpretation. They, they do something like they this. They answer right? questions of law, not yes. questions of fact. Correct. Yes, fact. yes. Yeah, that's what no, I'm saying. It would generally be phrased. But now here, it almost they sounds like. they can answer questions of fact when it's. In some areas, they are the court of original jurisdiction. Very rare, though. That's like state very versus rare. state. Yeah. yeah, that's very rare. I just didn't want to sure. like make people. Yeah. Think oh well, that actually, wasn't sure. Possible. But I'm saying that here, the the Supreme Court has almost said it feels like they're basically saying they're now going to be the determiners of fact in every criminal yeah. case against a president. That's essentially what's which happened, is part right? of why I disagree with the p opinion so bad. Like if they had just left the holding, like I said, and not tried to apply it, which they shouldn't necessarily be doing. Since there hasn't been real fact finding yet, I yeah, I think that same and now that's and now you're in it's just such a weird world because now the president like if I'm the president of the United States and this ruling has now been made, well now <laughs> my number one deter well, assuming I'm a piece of shit, my number one determining appointment for the Supreme Court is are right, what do you think the Supreme Court's role is in determining this presumptive immunity bucket? Right. I'm not choosing a fucking Supreme Court justice that like Amy, she's never going in. You're, you're already saying in your concurring opinion, what doesn't count is presumptive immunity. Fuck you, bitch. You're never going into my Supreme Court. I want all the Roberts and the Thomases because these guys are going to protect me from fucking everything. That seems like an insane stop for me. But yeah. OK. Yeah. Do you have any final thoughts before yeah. I drag in the pisser before he comes in? And uh, I don't think so. I think I, I think I covered everything I would planned on covering. OK. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. If my favorite Haitian friend wants to hop in, my Italian-American. Haitian-Italian.